that and other stories from London. I'm joined by a correspondent there, Ollie Barrett. Hello, Ollie. So, of course, the big news of the hour is that Prince Andrew, it looks, uh, will likely have to face uh, this civil suit in the USA. Uh, just tell us a little bit more about it, whether there's been any response uh, from the palace at all. No response from the palace at all at the moment. All that the palace will say uh, is that there won't be any comment on ongoing legal proceedings. There are sources close to Prince Andrew who are urging journalists not to get carried away with this particular latest development, which essentially threw out Andrew's legal team's attempts to get this particular case uh, thrown out by the judge because uh, they were saying that it related to a previous settlement that the uh, accuser of Prince Andrew, Virginia Giuffre, uh, had made with Jeffrey Epstein, which in their view meant that this uh, further claim shouldn't be able to go ahead. Well, the judge has dismissed that, so it does mean that the case can potentially proceed. And as you say, it does therefore open up the possibility of Prince Andrew being asked, at least, to appear in a New York courtroom in the coming months to answer some of the allegations being made against him. He has always denied uh, allegations of uh, sexual assault and sexual uh, abuse. Uh, clearly there are some decisions for Prince Andrew's legal team to make now. Do you uh, cooperate with these legal proceedings in the United States? Do you potentially pursue, separate to those legal proceedings, some kind of out-of-court settlement? None of the above options uh, look particularly good for the royal family. Prince Andrew has been very much distanced from public view uh, since these allegations started to swirl around him again. As I say, he denies all of the claims against him, uh, but the latest efforts by Prince Andrew's legal team to have it all dismissed uh, have themselves been dismissed now. Yeah, so that one is not going away. Let's move on to the latest on the COVID-19 pandemic in the United Kingdom because some of your experts in that country are saying uh, that the UK might be one of the first countries to emerge from the pandemic. There's much talk of it moving to an endemic state and uh, lots of parallels between what's happening in South Africa, of course, uh, where Omicron was first identified and what's happening in the United Kingdom. So tell us a little bit more about what's being said um, and, and whether this will mean an easing of restrictions. Yeah, well, th there are some particular comments from one particular scientist that are being seized on uh, by government officials. Uh, but actually, these are comments that are being made by other scientists, too, some of them privately. And some of the advice that the government is getting from its scientific advisors also reflects these comments, which come from Professor David Heyman of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, which really follows all of these things closely. He has said uh, publicly that he believes that the UK is now the closest of any comparable nation to moving out of the pandemic into endemicity. He says it may indeed already be there. And he says the reason for that, he believes, is a combination here in the UK of high levels of previous infection to a series of COVID-19 variants, but also very high levels of vaccination and booster coverage as well. We have well over 60% of people aged over 12 now who've received a booster dose. And those statistics are slightly skewed by the fact that it's actually only over 18s who are receiving those booster doses in the first place. So when you talk about adults, the vast majority of the population now has received a booster uh, vaccine. Professor Heyman says that that combination of previous infection and vaccination looks like it will now keep the virus at bay. And this chimes with what a number of government ministers have been saying recently, that they believe that the UK might be the first uh, major economy to move beyond the pandemic period. Ministers are very cautious about how often and how forcefully they say that because they know that another variant could come along that throws uh, everything up in the air again. But what that means for restrictions is certainly that some could be removed. In fact, there are very few restrictions on the English economy at the moment anyway. We're in so-called Plan B, which sees mask wearing in shops and on public transport, work from home guidance and masks in schools, and also uh, those COVID passes to gain access to major events. So it may well be that come January the 26th, when all of that is reviewed, that some, if not all of those measures, are indeed uh, removed. And certainly a lot of Conservative MPs 
MPs uh, are pressuring Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, indeed to do exactly that and remove some of those final restrictions that are in place that were toughened because of uh, Omicron. Boris Johnson is a weakened Prime Minister at the moment, so when he comes under that type of pressure, assuming he remains uh, in his job, he may well find he has a little option uh, than to go ahead with uh, some or uh, all of what those Conservative MPs are asking him to do. All right. Well, thank you so much for that update. UK correspondent Ollie Barrett in London.